Hello and welcome to our review of Gunkimono, an abstract strategy game set in feudal Japan. Gunkimono was designed by Jeffrey D. Allers, and features some gorgeous artwork from George Salas, graphic design by Melanie Graham, development by Daniel Fregman, Rem Jen, sorry, with Dustin Swartz doing the editing. This tile-laying game was published by Renegade Game Studios and is a re-implementation of the 2009 Pegasus Spiel game Heartland by the same designer. Sadly, this game is currently out of print, not even listed on Renegade's website, but it did have an MSRP of $40 and can still be found at most online stores and probably at your local game store. Now, I do wonder myself, this is without any research, if the use of certain fonts and images on this game may have been problematic as a product from persons with no Japanese heritage. However, as an abstract game, it's not clear that there was any need to make use of the imagery they did, but it was a choice. Now, in Gunkimono, you take on the role of a daimyo using a variety of various unit types to expand your control over the Japanese countryside. It features endless battles, betrayals, and tests of loyalty. Who am I kidding? This is a domino-based abstract strategy game with a cool but very pasted-on theme. Each turn, you place a two-sided tile on the board and either improve your honor, going up on one of five tracks, or you score points for each orthogonally adjacent connecting tile of the same color. Get your honor up high enough and you can place strongholds, which will score you points for the territories you are in every round. It's also bonus points for reaching the ends of the honor tracks, and that's about it. Gunkimono translates in English into War Tales. And very loosely, that's apparently the story you're telling on the board as you expand your reach. <laughs> but as much as we admittedly don't talk enough about theme at times, there's nothing at all linking the game to the graphic designs and art. Yeah, interestingly, I, I didn't catch the, the full name. The full title of the game is Gunkimono War Tales. You can actually see it right on the right on the box front there. Um but Board Game Geek, all the online stores, and even Renegade Games, when they had the game in stock, just listed it as Gunkimono. Now here, for me, the components are just like a step above perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. The tiles you're placing are thick cardboard, and they are distinguished both by color and by artwork. The board is functional, if a bit larger than it needs to be. Now what puts this a little step above the fact that the just fine is the fact that the scoring markers for each player are actually little unique samurai meeple, and you get a cool wooden katana as a first player marker. Those are just little things that they didn't need to do that I thought were cool touches. Standard meeple would have worked just fine. Uh, the rules here are extremely well written and simple enough that you could easily just sit down, crack this open for the first time, read the rules for the first time you're sitting down to play. The big complaint I have isn't with the quality, but the chosen colors. This game is not friendly to certain types of colorblindness. As well, the graphics, while interesting and different, are very busy. And this too can impact your play with the level of visual noise present on the board in front of you. So what's interesting about that actually is my youngest daughter, who does have some processing issues, including visual processing, found the game hard to look at. She actually found the board difficult. It hurt her eyes. And that so doesn't surprise me at all, It is definitely honestly. a problem. So now that we have an idea what you get and what the game is about, how about you walk us through how to play? All right. To start a game at Gunkimono, everyone picks one of the five player colors. They place their little samurai meeple at zero on the score track, place two strongholds on the honor track in the appropriate spot based on the number of players. Each player also collects one of each color of single square tiles. These each feature two honor tokens on them and are, of course, just one half of a full tile. Now, the standard two-part tiles are shuffled. Some tiles are removed at random with playing with less than five players. You then take out five of the tiles, mm -hmm. shuffle in the end-of-game Gunkimono tile, and put that stack off to the side. Now, there's a nice special tile to put on top of this so you don't get it mixed in with your regular tiles. Finally, three tiles from the supply are placed face-up, and players draw three tiles off of the stack, so everyone starts with a hand of three tiles. Now, the board in Gunkimono is an uneven grid of squares made up of the five different unit types or the five colors in the game. On your turn, you're going to take one of your tiles and place it on the board so that you can't cover up a square of the same color with your tiles. So you can't place a yellow on a yellow or an orange on an orange. You then are going to score your tile. You're going to score both halves of it each separately. So for each half, you can gain honor. 
going up on the honor track based on how many stronghold symbols are on the tile, or you can score points. And the way you score points is you're going to get a point for that tile and any connected adjacent tile, and that's orthogonally. So if you're connected to two other tiles and they're connected to tiles, you're basically going to scare, score any area of the same color. Now, again, remember, you make this decision separately for each of your tiles. So you could score with both, you could get honor with both, or you can mix and match. Now, you also have the option, instead of playing one of the double tiles, to play your single square tile. These can be used to score points or go up in honor just like normal. Finally, you can actually use your single square tiles as a supporting unit, it's called. You're going to flip it over and you're going to place it on the board so it creates a level area for you to play on. So now all of this would be making way more sense if you could actually see the tiles as Mo described yeah. them. The rules are really simple to grasp once you have the components in front of you. Now, when we say this is an abstract game, we weren't kidding. The game basically only needs dominoes with different colors at either end and either one or two pips on each of those colored sides. Yeah. And That's again, it. like the unit types, like, yes, there's archers and there's spearmen and there's mounted cavalry. All that matters is you're grouping them together. Now, after placing your tile and getting your honor or points, you check to see if you have enough honor to earn a stronghold. You get these for having a set amount of honor in all five colors, with the amount needed varying based on the player count. If you can place a stronghold, you pick one area of connected squares on the board that are all the same color, and you put your stronghold on. From that point on, no other player can add to that area, and you can only score add to it to score honor. But at the end of every single round in the game, you're going to get points for every square in your stronghold's areas. Now, in addition to this, you can also earn bonus points by hitting the top of the honor track in each of the five colors. Uh, these are represented by tiles, and there's three levels of tiles worth descending points. So the first one to get to the end of a track is going to get the better tile, whereas the third person is going to get the worst tiles. And anyone after the third person is going to get nothing for hitting the end of the track. Now, each of these tiles are grouped in five point ranges. so You never know exactly how many you've got, and you're not allowed to reveal them to the end of the game. So it's one way so you don't necessarily know. You don't have that perfect information of knowing exactly what everyone's score is, which is actually something I appreciate. Now, once your turn is done, if you did play a tile, you're going to select a new tile, either from the three face up ones or from the face down stacks. If you take a face up one, you replace it. Now, a game of Gunkimono ends at the end of the round where the Gunkimono tile was drawn. Remember, you had set five tiles aside and shuffled it in at the beginning of the game. At this point, players flip over those bonus things and add them to your score, and whoever has the most points wins. Well, now that you have a pretty a good idea of how to play, let's move on to what we thought of this abstract strategy game. So I feel I need to start by calling out the theme and the total, complete lack of connection to the gameplay. Like, this is a chess level of abstraction. No one playing chess actually feels like they're recreating a battle on a battlefield. In no way do I feel like I'm playing a Damio or controlling troops at all. This is a pure abstract all the way. And I've got to say, the farming theme of the game that was in the original Heartland fits better, because I can at least see trying to put similar plants together way more than I can just grouping my tiles. So I admit, I, if it was a game about grouping plants, I probably never would have tried this game. So I guess the theme did something there. Yeah, as I mentioned, I don't really see the, see the theme anything other than as a marketing tool. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you could sell this as a clean, modern design with bright, solid colors and zero art. Uh, I, I think of it almost as like an executive desk game, a little on the yeah. big side. But, you know, with those those really clean, crisp colors, solid, yeah. solid pieces. You know. You might even be able to recreate this with like something like Quirkle style tiles, right? Mm -hmm. Like make it very clear. Stars, circles, squares, hexagons. It would actually probably be easier to look at than this. Oh, I like Samurai and it looks cool. So I don't know. Uh, to be fair, theme doesn't actually matter, right? This is an abstract strategy game. How much of the theme really matter? The gameplay is in this more than makes up for the lack of theming. This is a very solid, surprisingly deep abstract strategy game. It does the thing that all good abstract strategy games do by being simple to learn, but difficult to master. Absolutely. Despite the sort of negative aspects I pointed out and feeling I may have given, I really enjoyed playing this at multiple player counts mm -hmm. and saw a number of different ploys and strategies to try out as the play evolved. Now, this is one of those games where the more you play it, the more you realize just how things work and things interact. You're going to discover new strategies. 
And I think the most important thing in this game that takes you a bit to get used to is figuring out the perfect time to do things. Like, do you build on a color and keep adding to it, hoping to chain it for multiple turns? You know, get five points this turn, six points next turn, eight points next turn. But if you do that, you risk someone throwing a stronghold on it and taking it and then getting those points every turn going forward. And then when to place your strongholds? Do you try to get it out as soon as you can at the very beginning of the game? So you're scoring those bonus points almost passively for the rest of the game? Yeah, but as soon as you put your stronghold out, and Deanna has totally called it, the first person to get their stronghold out gets screwed over. The other players are going to cut you off as quick as they can. And you're mm -hmm. going to have a stronghold out there getting one point every turn for you. And it's decisions like this that honestly keep bringing me back. It's what engages me when I play Gun Kimono. And a lot of it depends on how much time you want to spend thinking. If you want to track what colors the other players are picking up to think about what they have mm -hmm. in their hands and work out the odds of the different ploys that they could go on and whether or not you think they have the green that could go down here and mm -hmm. expand. But that will really stretch out game time. Yeah, this game, uh, the AP is possible. I will just say it could go either way and I've seen it go either way. Now, another thing I appreciate about Gun Kimono is how well it plays at all player counts. This is a game that plays two to five players, which I actually forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about the game. Uh, two to five players, and at two, it's a very different game from the other player counts. It's, it's very cutthroat, and it plays really quick, like to the point of almost becoming a thinky filler. I think Deanna and I finished the game in under 20 minutes at one point, just playing back and forth. And also at two players, because the board doesn't change much between turns, you can do that long-term planning. You can be like, I'm going to play this tile, then I'm going to play this tile, then I'm going to do this, and well, I'll adapt if I have to. It wasn't for the size of the board. This would be in our list of games to bring, like keep in the van and bring with us when we go to pubs or coffee shops or whatever. But that board's a little too big for your average coffee shop. This would be in, in, in there with only Tom and the Duke for us. Now, while I do dig it at two, it really got better once you throw in three. Once you throw in that competition, there's just more interesting interactions. You've got players cutting each other off. Um, the board becomes more three-dimensional, because I don't know if you could get that when I was describing the game. You are playing stacks on top of stacks, and the board can get pretty high in a way with it. And you get more of that with three players. Um, this continues more, even more, right? When you go up to four players, there's more tiles in play and five, there's a ton of tiles in play and five players really changes things because as you add players, the strongholds come out easier at five players. You get your first stronghold by having one honor and all of them, you get your second stronghold by having two honor. If you play properly, you can unlock all of those by turn five. Because you can just play a two, a two, a two, a two. Uh, you might even be able to pull it off earlier if you combo it right. I don't know. I've, I've, I've only played five players once, I will admit. Um, the problem, though, five players was just a bit too much. It worked. It, it was really serviceable. It The game didn't break. But time, the AP, the time between turns got rather long. Just waiting for five other people to plan out what they're doing. And what made it really bad, well, worse. I shouldn't say bad. Again, it's not bad. But what made it worse was the amount of thinking because you couldn't plan ahead. The board changed way too much. For other players doing things and changing things, it was almost impossible to do that three move ahead plan. By the time it got to your turn, most of the time, that first step of that three move plan was gone. That spot had been taken. Someone else noticed it. Someone else took it. And then so you're like, oh, we got to play quick. Be ready to play on your turn, right? That's what everyone tells everyone who has AP. Be ready to play as soon as it's your turn. Well, that can't happen when what you just did totally invalidated what I was planning. Now I got to rethink everything and recount everything and think about what tiles you drafted last turn and what I should do next. So, yeah, and, and Board Game Geek really backs this up with four coming in as the as uh, voted as the best player count, which right. really does seem to match your experiences. Now, not loving the game at five is really the only thing bad I have to say about this game. Overall, Kimono is an excellent abstract strategy game, easy to learn, easy to play, but has plenty of engaging decision points to engage even the most hardcore gamers. This is one of those games my kids could sit and play on their own, but I could also sit down with the local chess master Charles and have fun playing him in a cutthroat two-player game. If you dig abstract strategy games, you owe it to yourself to try to sink, seek out a copy of Gun Kimono. As noted earlier, sadly, it's currently out of print and has completely vanished from Renegade's website, which leads me to think there's no reprint coming. 
So if you do find a copy now, you should probably want to pick it up. With how much we've been enjoying it, though, I do hope some publisher grabs it and gets it back in print. This has all the makings of an evergreen abstract. It could be up there with games like Azul. Now, do make sure you take a look at it, though. Maybe check it out on Board Game Geek, because if you do have any vision issues, you wouldn't want to be picking it up and struggling with any of those uh, concerns. Totally fair. Maybe we'll get a new printing with clearer distinction between the five unit types or whatever we're going to call them, five different actions. Now, if you're not into abstract strategy games, you're probably going to want to avoid this one. Um, the cool samurai theme isn't really going to be enough to sell this game. And despite the war theme, there's no war game here. This is a domino based area building game, not the mass battle game it claims to be. Though the Katana first player token is pretty neat to have. Yeah, I got to say that is one of the best first player tokens I've seen in a game. Now, before I go, I do want to take a moment to talk a bit about the one expansion that exists for Gunkimono, and that is the Double Army Tiles. Now, these were released as part of the Level Up loot box from Renegade, and that's one of those you get a box and it's got a bunch of little things for a bunch of different games. I was also being given away as promos at cons before that. Now, these tiles feature only one color on both halves of the tile. The honor tokens match the existing ones, though. So one, one has one token, the other side has two tokens. Now, to use these at the start of the game, you get two random tiles from the supply and then one of these again at random. So you don't know what it is. That's it. That's how you set up. Now, what these do is they give you a big step up, a big bonus in one color that may not match your player color, which is worth noting. Like just because you're playing yellow doesn't mean you get the yellow tile. This gives you the ability to in one move gain three honor with one tile or gives you the ability to a score a large area twice because you still resolve this two colored tile both halves separately. So you score one, then the other. Note, I have no idea how available these are, but I did want to mention them tonight since we're talking about the game. Why not talk about the expansion? These aren't anything needed. To me, these are a perfect promo. It's something kind of cool to add to the game, but I, there's no FOMO, I think, with these. You're not missing out by not having them. They're just kind of neat to have. Uh, and I actually saw them going on... Uh the uh, secondary market for like eight bucks plus shipping. So, and that's, that untouched. seems pretty good. Yeah. So that's it for our review of Gunkimono, an abstract tiling game set in feudal Japan. Theme isn't everything. What's a game you dig where the theme is barely tied to the mechanics. Tell us about it in the comments below. I also invite you to check out my written review of Gunkimono on the tabletop bellhop blog. <laughs>